Hey YouTube, I believe this is uh, installment 4 of the uh, Tamiya Grand Hauler slash King Kong ZL130 semi-build. We're 95% uh, complete. The only thing I have left is lights. And I just keep putting them off. Actually, I needed to, I ordered some more LEDs. Uh, I'm going to try to make this quick. <clears throat> and try not to forget any names. So the truck is done, the truck runs, the truck does everything it needs to do, just no lights. I'll show you the sound and everything in a minute. I think I showed before, if this thing will focus, I put uh, my little 2S, actually, I'm sorry, 3S battery down there, shoved the connectors underneath. Pegs how I mounted the body. Dan Davidson beef tube slash um, I'm gonna forget his name there uh, I don't know what I'm looking for anyways that's where I got the uh, oversized load banners. I put one on the front, and uh, there's one on the trailer. Reggie Clark out of Canada. Custom rear bumper, aluminum. And that's where I uh, ordered some different LEDs. I didn't have what I needed to actually put in this, so that's the look I wanted to go for. I wanted it nice and clean. I wanted it old school. <clears throat> Chico Gonzalez. I hope I said that right. Chico Zagalas out of, uh, I think he's out of Illinois. Uh, his buddy custom made me the headache rack because I needed it for my dimensions. All the rest of the pre-bought ones, they're too big. They're, they're, you know, for a big, they're for the sleeper cabs. So... He machined everything out. I didn't put, you know, I wanted no holes. So I used two of the mount. They're actually the gas tank, the front gas tank mounts to bolt it down. You know, and I wanted it as close as I could get it so that, you know, from this angle, this angle, it's hiding everything. I put the wood in the bottom of it, and you'll see why I did that. Put the metal uh, bar in there to put the uh, chain and the binders on. So that completes that look. You know everything else about the truck from the other installments. Team Associated ESS1 Plus. And I had an auxiliary horn and for some reason I'm not sure what happened. I might have messed something up there. But I did have a horn. You know, so let's... Eighty turn motor, stock ten tooth uh, pinion. Nothing big there. We'll let it shut down. So there's the tractor. Now you know what the uh, theme I was going for with my load. So let's get to the trailer first. Let me uh, move some stuff off of here. Joey, I want to say Joey Schlater. Uh, we just got back last weekend from Lebanon, Indiana. From a, a, a semi and construction show. But I bought... Uh, he was 3D printing scale ratchet straps. Now, they don't actually ratchet. If it gets that. Rather, they just, you slide it through. Once you put your two sides together, you just pull it. But they hold very strong. So if you put something across your trailer, here, we'll just do this. 
you know, to, to load. Well, well, that was no good. Oh, that's, I put the supports in there, and, I, and it's not going to clip on the side of there, is it? Ah, well, anyways. Because I put them extra. I think I showcased the trailer. I, I don't remember which installment if I did, but it's two brooders. Two brooder low loaders. So I have five axles. I gained 11 and a half inches on the deck. I gained three inches up on the top deck. I got plenty of supports under here, if my camera will show it. Of course, I painted it, so it's going to be hard to see. I put the uh, Yeah Racing shackle mounts on the sides. I put four. I'll show you why where I put them. Scale chain. Uh, it's not weathered yet. More more of the uh, binders. That's showing the binders. And they actually bind. I mean, they are 3D printed plastic or PLA or whatever it is. But it will bind. That's for... You guys already know the load. The Ertl case steam tractor, which... Everything does run, and I've already looked this over, all of the gears. I mean, they're 32 pitch. This whole bottom plate comes off, and all this is hollow. I'm a little stuck on how it actually steers to be able to do it RC, but this thing will be RC in time. It's just not high on my priority list right now. But it sits on the trailer about right there. I used the two back chains to chain the back tires. I used the front one to chain the front. And then this other little doodad. I think I mentioned it before, but maybe I didn't. Going along with the steam and the thresher shows is uh, a doodle bug. Uh, and a doodle bug's usually a, a Ford Model A frame or a tractor or whatever, whatever they have laying around. And they make a doodle bug, which basically is their period correct golf cart uh, slash little get around mobile. So I used the WLP, I think. Um, it was the four wheel drive truck. And the real reason I did that is because it's leaf sprung. So I wanted leaf springs. Yeah, it shouldn't be four wheel drive, but it is. And. I figured, you know, at least it'll get through everything. You know, I sanded the tires to get them about bald. I cut the frame. Uh, the, the body is styrene with, like, aluminum here for the louver, which is the same aluminum that I use for the tin roof. I know it's not correct. Uh, you, you know, it's not 100%, but it's close. All the electronics are in there, which are not WLPA. The motor is still stock, and you can't see down in there, but there is. Yeah, you can't see it. There is a uh, three-wire micro servo in there for the steering chores. My FlySky FSGT3 receiver is in there. Whatever little 6-volt uh, battery that the WPL came with. And I did, uh, I put some pedals in it. I don't know if you can see in there. Pedals, a little gear shifter. I made the steering wheel. Put a little pack of smokes there. Have your uh, Jack Daniels and Coke. And if you've ever been to a steam show, there are coolers everywhere. Yes, with adult beverages in them. So, let's, uh, we can fire this thing up. Yeah, and just running it on a, uh, FSGT3C. The sound unit is uh, the Orlando sound unit, which I've used before, but it's not as loud as I thought it was going to be. But it does run. 
you know, fully functional. So I can drive it around at shows. I'm still trying to find people that will fit in it and a person that I can stand on the back of the engine that will look scale. So that I put right there, run one chain across it with the binder. That kind of completes my, my theme of what I was shooting for. And then, uh, let's move some stuff out of the way. I think I can get it all in there. So that's all of it. <clears throat> it's uh, five foot long, believe it or not. I mean, pretty sure this is a six foot table, and we're using up all of it. But it dries great. It, it, I get it around great. Yeah, it is long, but you know, like the show we went to last weekend, it's a pretty big arena. So there it is. There, there is my. Uh, my big rig. Um, I'm going to do another video just for the USTE show in, what is it, one and a half weeks we're leaving. Uh, this is going on Sunday of that show. I think they're going to have a little uh, 114th showdown. So this is ready. It, it, just, it just needs lights. So that is that. And I'm going to throw in on this video although it's going to get its own in time but I have something else going oh I actually have a couple things there might be another video tomorrow I do have a Huna 580 all metal um, excavator it's actually on its way to me it's like in my state so I'm not sure if that'll be here tomorrow but I'll do another video on that so I'm gonna actually have a pretty nice entry level all metal um, excavator to play with <clears throat> but I picked up a uh, Bruder the D5 cat which if you I never went to any of these shows they are see these um, I, I forget it was Rural King or a big R Christmas time these are usually like 30 bucks they had them marked down to 20 and then there was I don't remember I got it for $11 and I kicked myself in the butt for not buying all of them but the blade goes up and down. I mean, it's a toy, sure. But there's a way to convert these. And I just walked out and got the mail. I'm going to try the high tech HSR 2645CR. Now, that CR means continuous rotation. So it's a standard, standard size servo. All metal gears, they're good up for 7.4 volts, which is, there's a reason for this. It's a standard servo, three wire, but continuous rotation. And it's digital. So with more or less input, it, they will speed up. I'm not going to take that thing apart, but basically, they're putting these inside of here. And somebody's printing a new uh, 3D drive wheels to make them bigger teeth. And uh, once I get some measurements, I'm going to have those coming. But I hope these servos work because my idea there is, and they're, they're actually, I Servo City is where I got these. Hopefully, I know the power is there. Hopefully the speed is there. A couple of the guys at the show complained of theirs were too slow. Continuous rotation, so I don't have to modify anything in there. It even says in there, continuous rotation. I don't know what to say, robot servo. Wide voltage, supports all types of receivers, 4.8 to 7.4 volt. So there's the trick. I'm going to run it with the Flysky FSI 6. <clears throat> I'll be able to do my uh, mixes on there to get it to track like a tank. But I'm going to feed, the, so the space is so small, and it's going to have a standard servo in the front to run the blade up and down. I know a guy that put an uh, automatic angle on there. I don't know if I'm going to go that far yet. But with the space, I'm going to run a 2S LiPo, 7.4 volts. I'm going to plug it right into the receiver and then plug these into the receiver. And that's how it will operate. 
Well, I don't need any fancy speed controllers. You know, don't need the, so what do they, saber tooth or whatever, the two by five, or we don't need anything like that. You put these servos in, uh, this, I think, this is an actual airplane channel or radio. I, I might get this wrong, so don't quote me, but say this is one and two and this is three and four, but I could have it backwards, but I think this one is one and two on this side. You'll put the servos in one and two, set up your switches so that forward and backwards is forward and backwards with both motors running. And if you run it side to side in either direction, it will change the direction and it will track or tank track. Not real difficult to do. So I'll probably do a, a separate video once I get this running. I don't know if I'm going to do a whole build video on it because there's plenty of them out there. But the next task is to get that apart so I can work on that. So there you have it. There is uh, installment four of my uh, Grand Hauler King Kong ZL-130. Thanks for watching.